Here's why I mostly stop swearing, but why you might not want to. And the distinction really comes down to running. By the way, hello my friend. So I stopped swearing sometime in 2019. But before that, it might surprise some of you to know that I used to swear a lot. Like many of you, I was actively told not to swear by parents, teachers, and other authority figures, and I was threatened with punishment if I did. And I always kind of did anyway, so I was punished a little bit. I just really didn't like being forced into anything. I guess I was kind of a handful. And like many of you, when those authority figures couldn't punish me anymore, I was like, Pfft, well now I'm just gonna say and do whatever I want. Now whether or not you relate to this, I think the reason why this mindset is so prevalent among young adults is because we're taught not to swear so we can seem more clean, professional, and eloquent. Which I admit is important to a lot of careers. But even as children, I think some of us intuitively recognize that some adults who seem clean, professional, and eloquent will still stab you in the back, right? Not all. Course, but it's notable that wearing an expensive suit and having a winning smile and winning handshake doesn't mean someone won't harm you. Just look at all the white collar crimes and scandals going on right now. Bankers who steal millions and ruin lives, unfortunately. But at least they're eloquent, right? Now whether or not you agree with that, I think that's why there's a tendency among some people to gravitate away from that and towards people who seem gruff and rough around the edges. You might say they tell it like it is and seem more authentic. And I was raised around a lot of salt of the earth, blue collar workers. So it was easy for me to want to be like them and speak uncensored. And the reason I suddenly stopped in 2019 wasn't so I can seem nicer on YouTube. I know some of you were guessing that. I didn't start until 2020. In fact, if I were planning it out, like I mentioned, some people might trust me a bit more if I dropped the occasional F-bomb because it might seem more authentic to show some warts in a day and age where a lot of things seem glam and polished. Now, it was partially because I went through a period of self-discovery between 2017 and 2020 that turned me into how the internet knows me today, a plucky fitness content creator whose channel is only sometimes about fitness. And during that time, I discovered that it was more authentic to me not to swear but it may not be more authentic to you. And as you're choosing between which and which, the answer might not be what you think because it wasn't what I initially thought. And I like to boil it down to one question. Where do you run if nobody is chasing you? As in, who do you wanna be if nobody is forcing you to be anything. Now this can be kind of hard to imagine because as you know, life is full of pressures, right? People chasing you metaphorically and literally sometimes and forcing you to be this or that, especially as a young adult, which many of you are. So you might never get a chance to even wonder who you would want to be if you didn't have those pressures. But isn't it funny to think about how we respond to those pressures in different ways, in wildly different ways? Here's an example. Most of us know at least one religious family, right? At least one. And if that family has multiple kids raised religiously, there's sometimes just that one sibling, or sometimes more than one, who grows up and is like, nope, I never liked this religion. I never liked being forced into it as a kid. It never made any sense to me. So now that I'm grown up, I'm gonna choose this other religion, this other denomination, or just choose not to be religious at all. And that's a valid viewpoint, right? People grow up and they can choose their own religions. But that same person will sometimes have siblings that went the other way. They were also pressured into that religion in the sense that they were raised religiously by their parents, but they like it. They like that religion, it's helped them find peace, they raise their kids that way, and the cycle continues. And yeah, sometimes it's the other way around with more siblings that don't like it, I don't know. I'd be curious to know the stats. But that's also a valid viewpoint. Different things work for different people. And I don't mean to rile anyone up, but you obviously see the same thing sometimes with politics, right? It's another very clear example that many of us know. Some kids will adopt their parents' political viewpoints, and others will go the polar opposite. My point here is that different people seem to respond to their upbringing and social pressures in different ways. Some roll with them, and others go the polar opposite, and probably a lot in between. And as you may have noticed, not all of these pressures are forceful, right? If you were raised in a family that loves gardening, you might also feel a slight pressure to also try gardening. And the fascinating part to me is that it's not really until later in life, when we've had some more experience and time to think, that we really start to analyze the choices we made for ourselves, if we've done it at all. And if you haven't done that, I recommend spending some time starting now, because as you can see in the rest of this video, the result can be very freeing for you. And as we analyze our choices and make new ones or adjust them, we often find that they're a little bit more neutral. To circle back to our example before, someone raised very religiously might have been driven away because they were raised so strictly and so religiously. Later on in life, thinks, hmm, I actually still like that religion. I just didn't like the way my family 
observed it. So I'm going to go back to that, but I want to observe it in my own way. I have my own interpretation of that. Similar thing with politics. Now I know these are very contentious topics, very serious topics, rightfully so. So I'm not necessarily saying this is how things should be, but it is how I've observed how things are, sometimes. And these are very simplified compared to real life, right? It's usually not so black and white. In reality, we're subject to all sorts of social pressures that kind of ping pong us. Our boss wants us to be like this. Our professor wants us to be this way. Our friends want us to be like this, but our coworkers, hmm, they like this a little bit more. And our significant other, they want us to be like this. It's like a spiral or a zigzag, I guess. And some of us are fairly steadfast, but it can still kind of feel like we're being pushed one way or the other, which is why it can take some time to answer the question, where do we run when nobody is chasing us? Who do we want to be if nobody is forcing us to be anything? Because an important realization, I think, is that if we only do something because we're told not to do it, then we're just as easily controlled as if we only do what we're told. Push doors are just as easy to open as pull doors, right? Because someone could just tell you to do the opposite of what they actually want you to do, and boom, you're a puppet. Not puppy, which is good, but puppet, which is bad. Of course, again, these are extreme examples. Real life has nuance. Most of us know we have free will. So analyzing what we actually want can be a little bit more subtle. Do you actually want to be a doctor or lawyer or engineer, etc., or is it to impress your parents? And it's even more convoluted when they didn't explicitly tell you they want that. It's something you still felt. So sometimes you might have pressures and an influence that's subconscious, but it's still there. Then there's the opposite, of course. Do you actually want to start your own business, or is it to prove yourself to your friends, family, and others who didn't think you could do it? All of these examples have opposites. So let's take a look at something smaller. Something smaller would be, do you intentionally wear baggy clothing because you don't like modern beauty standards? Think of some of your everyday choices. What do you wear? Who are you dating? What do you eat? What movies do you watch? And even how you choose to see yourself in your own mind. How much of that is what you would naturally choose versus a reaction to how others want you to be? And again, that reaction can be going with it or going against it. Now you might point out at this point, hopefully not too angrily, that it's fine to know that you're being influenced and to allow it because you still want that. And you're absolutely right. Like you might know that you dress a certain way, speak a certain way, swear a lot to bring it back to the topic because of how you were raised as a kid. And you might still do that because you're okay with it. And that's a valid viewpoint. To use a personal example, I think the reason I speak more quickly, one of the reasons I speak more quickly is because I was cut off a lot as a kid. I think the idea that kids don't get opinions. So I needed to speak quickly to communicate my points because otherwise I wouldn't be able to get them out. It's possible, probable even, but I'm okay with that. So I'll probably always speak a little bit quicker than average. And that's why the video is titled the way it is. I stopped swearing because I feel like I didn't need to. I do like making my content a little bit more family friendly in case there are kids who want to watch fitness content but have parents who don't like swearing or crude humor. So I like making it more accessible because of that, but it's not the main reason. I just want to take things about myself and remove them if they only existed as a reaction to something else. And swearing was just an example. And you don't have to stop for the same reasons I did. You don't have to stop at all. As the title shows, I don't want to push you one way or the other. That's something you can decide for yourself. It's not up to me to judge your words, but I do think it's worthwhile to occasionally examine the choices we make and adjust them if we realize it's not what we actually want. Now that can take some time and the distinction can be very subtle, but the best part for me is that the right choice often feels more natural. Progress often feels more natural. When you realize you don't actually want to do something or that you actually do, it can sometimes feel like a weight has been lifted off your chest and you're like, ah, this was the right thing. It's not the only indicator, but hopefully it's something that can help you choose. Now choosing whether or not we want to swear is a very, very small decision compared to some of the life choices that we have to make, some of which can radically impact ourselves and others. It's just an example, but hopefully you can extrapolate from my story and use it to change yours for the better. Full disclosure, I still swear a little bit depending on who I'm talking to. Hey, beautiful day, my friend. Oh, and I made this shirt if any of you want it.